Austin Fitz and the Solari Report back for your next contributions to Spiritual Science Academy. We're going to talk today about threefold social organism and what this actually means. So I think there's nothing more important in this curriculum than the threefold social order. You think so? I think so. I think this is a very, very important aspect of Steiner's work. I agree, it is important. May I make a reference to, because we have in two days, a hundred years centenary, where Steiner, for the last time, publicly tried to explain what threefold is about in a very simple way. I would like to start with that. Yeah, please. That was in Vienna. You know, in, in the music, you would like that. In the, in the music, Philharmonic? In the Musikvereinsgebäude. <gasps> oh, wonderful. 2,000 people were there every night. Journalists, press, 10 days. It was the culmination of Steiner's public um, activity. And in the last lecture of the 10 lectures or 11, um, he speaks about threefold. And that was the last time that he spoke about threefold because he had done that several years since 1917 and it was not a success out outwardly. And here he comes again. Now the main reference, a man came up in Vienna who brought the abstract program of Pan-Europa, which led to the EU under the guidance of Churchill. Program, counter-program. So, in this last lecture, he made an um, introduction into threefold, very elementary. And the elementary thing is the historical reference to the French Revolution, which was a great thing. It, it, it got terrible after a while, but it was the birth time of three great human ideals that resonate, resonate in every soul. The ideal one is liberty or freedom. The ideal second is equality. All human beings should be equal. And the ideal three is brotherlyhood. These three ideals are deeply rooted in every soul. And the problem is these right ideals, and you can find good reasons for every of these three, why they are necessary. But the problem is, they cannot be realized really in the social organism as long as the social organism is, what is the name? Centrally controlled. Yes, yeah, centrally controlled, has only one source that is managing all the affairs which belong to the sphere of liberty. Now, what belongs to the sphere of liberty? This is the spiritual life. The cultural life, you could say, this is something which has the ideal of freedom and liberty. And this has to be respected, that in spiritual, cultural life, you have freedom. You have not the state or you have not the economic interests which dictate what is, what is being produced in culture. And in order to do that, you have to free the three spheres of the unity um, state as we have today, even in the EU. So I want to uh, hold up just a second here because the some people do not necessarily see the connection between spiritual and cultural. So I used to always tell you about my friend who would say, culture is the integration of the divine in everyday life. And I once said to him, you forgot to mention that it can be the integration of the demonic in everyday life. But there's a very integrative, the, our spiritual foundation is really what drives culture. Mm -hmm. And what really integrates culture into everyday life. Mm -hmm. And so we, I grew up in a world that was entirely focused on the material. And it was almost as though the spiritual and cultural didn't exist. So, yeah, that's why the key of threefold is real 
spiritual life which starts with our ordinary thinking life. People have to learn to think independently and not only material things but also spiritual things should be entered entering into our thought life. So that's the, the key of the threefold is a real strong spiritual life. And what we have today is phrases, is um, phraseology, ideology. Ideologies, we don't need ideologies, we need active spiritual life f rooted in the individual who is a thinking being. And th so you talk about thinking and believing and there's three. No, not believing. Believing has nothing to do with uh, uh -huh. the real spiritual life. Well, in the modern sense, believing was the way to refer to the spirit in the Middle Ages, in a time where there was not an individual waking up um, uh, thought life. But today, I think the way to the spirit is through, through um, thinking. Well, we, you were and, mentioning this construct of three things, one of which was thinking, feeling. Exactly. Thinking, feeling. Willing. Willing. Thinking belongs to the spiritual life, cultural life. It's individual. Everyone has to think for himself. You cannot think for others. That doesn't work. And feeling is, rela um, is related to the law and right sphere. Everyone has the right feeling. Uh, as human beings, we should be treated alike in law. There is no difference. Mm -hmm. No individual difference. And, and willing has an extension in the, in the life of economy. And you can make uh, another reference. Spiritual life is what we bring out of the time before birth. Mm -hmm. The right sphere life feeling is for the presence. And the, the economy, economy impulses of willing are for the future. They go into the future. But these three, uh, now we have another trinity, thinking, feeling and willing. Spiritual, cultural life, um, law life and economic life. And the brotherlyhood would be the ideal of today's economy, world economy, not national economy, that time is over. We have a world economy, but we don't have brotherlyhood in it, because we don't have the ideal that belongs to this sphere yet working. Because we have a few individuals who are actually behaving in a rather antisocial way, just to fulfill the needs of their little group. And that is so dominating today that we cannot talk about brotherlyhood. Everyone knows, for example, in, in economic life, we have to share goods. Say first, um, what we eat, food. Everyone has the need for food. But, and I think there is enough food uh, on the whole world, but the distribution problem is there. It's not distributed in an intelligent way so that some people are just starving all the time, which doesn't mean that we have not enough on the world. There is no brotherlyhood, but little group or individual interests go into the economic sphere. This is the wrong sphere for them. The right sphere for individual interests is the cultural, spiritual life, a musician or a poet has to f do exactly what he thinks he can do best and no one else has to um, interfere. And this is a perverse situation that we have the ideal of liberty uh, in the economic life where it doesn't belong to. It belongs to the spiritual cultural life. And we have, on the other hand, take socialism, brotherlyhood, caricature, that we share all the same opinions. Uh, that is a caricature of a true 
cultural individual life. Well, maybe this is just to start the reference that these three ideas are there and they are deeply rooted. But to bring them out in the right way needs a different social structure uh, today, still today. What can I add to make it even more clear? So, one of, to me, one of the most important points, and I heard it, remember when you did the workshop in Basel and Gerhard spoke, you spoke, and one of the most important things I learned there was the absolute importance of the law not being subject to economy. Absolutely. So we just watched a example of how during the financial crisis, the, uh, the people in charge of the law in the United States took the position that they couldn't hold the banks accountable for criminal behavior because it might hurt the economy. And that's a perfect example of subverting the rule of law and, and converting it to the rule of man for the convenience of the economy. Mm -hmm. And we often hear that, oh, we can't enforce the law because it would be inappropriate. And there's a wonderful phrase, let justice be done though the heavens fall, which is supports the idea that the law should not be subordinate to the economy. Absolutely, it should be independent. And that means you have not the same people who decide about the law and who decide about the economy and who decide about what is taught at schools or universities. You have three different bodies, so to speak. Right. They have to be coordinated, but they are to be separated to begin with. And so, I think the key of the whole thing is the free cultural, spiritual life. If we don't have this, we have not a basis for understanding anything in the in the other spheres. Right. Today, how how can we understand what is going on in the world if people have not woken up uh, for their own inner judgment ability? Many people today are totally unable to see what is actually going on because they don't think anymore. They have just have are filled with catchwords and with what is said in the media all the time repeatedly some people think if you repeat often enough something uh, which is idiotic it gets true by repetition which is of course not working so free spiritual life is the key and i can only i have to add even in the movement that steiner founded the anthroposophical movement the spiritual scientific movement we are talking about here, about this is not always fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Today you have schools, world of schools, which have not free spiritual life, but they adapt to the economic sphere or the, the political right sphere. The right sphere is actually the sphere in which politics has its function and right. it should be restricted to this sphere. Right. This is also order, public order, police function. That's the right sphere in a way. So it, what's interesting is if you have the strength in the spiritual and the strength in the law, your economy does much better. Absolutely. Than if you shrink it. Absolutely. But, but or, or if you implement the rule of man instead of the rule of law, then a few can benefit, but you shrink the pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's what's so interesting because the anytime you hear the justification that economy can overrule law, it's not really the economy overruling law, it's the economy of a few overruling the economy of the many. Right, right. The few and the many. Let me add something. The, the spiritual cultural life is in the hands of individuals. In the right sphere, and you can't, you cannot vote about questions of, say, truth. Truth belongs there. You cannot vote about whether something is true and find uh, the majority and then say, the majority thinks it's true, so it will be true. Majority has only a right in the right sphere. There you can vote democratically. The democratic principle belongs to the right sphere. 
not to the spiritual sphere, not to the economic sphere. In economy, you have not the majority, but you have, so to speak, the uh, bringing together from all points of view what has to be said about um, a good and a price. This can only be the result of many, many points of view, universal judgment. Individual judgment, majority judgment and universal would be referring to the three spheres also we have here. So we, we've, if you, if you go to Spiritual Science Academy and you go to, we have something called the Thomas Meyer Library, where we have all of your interviews all together in one place. It's very popular. <laughs> Is it already there? Yeah, yeah, it's I been there. I haven't seen it. Uh -huh. Yes, you have. Uh, we, have I? When we brought up the website, okay, it, we put it there. And what we did is we made sure all your old interviews were public and they could access all of them. Mm -hmm. So so one of the things we've talked about is how do you how do we deal with evil? What does Steiner teach us about evil and how to deal with evil? And we talk about the impact of the Aramonic and the Luciferian coming through mm -hmm. the spiritual, entering the culture and then impacting law and economy. Mm -hmm. So did you want to talk about the Arimanic and Luciferian influence? Well, today, Arimanic influence is foremost. In other times, it was more Lucifer. Today, it's more Ariman. And the Arimanic influence is, of course, absolutely against anything we're talking about here, like threefold. It's the biggest enemy of threefold. Mr. Global doesn't want to have anything to do with threefold. It right. must all be centralized. That is a, a real uh, um, obstacle to understand the threefold idea uh, and even, of course, more to put it into practice. So the Aramanic time influence is tremendous. But how can you see the Aramanic time influence without a free spiritual life? Spiritual life has been you know, it was for centuries, you would say science. Science was linked to nature, natural science, technology. That's all fine. But now we need a science that is as exact and sure as natural science, but goes to understand spiritual realities like Ariman, Lucifer, demonic beings, good spiritual beings, angels. We have to understand as exactly um, these realities, super sensible realities, as we are used to understand uh, natural physical realities to build our technologies. Everybody thinks technology is based on exact science and in a way it is, uh. but in spiritual matters people are rather vague often and think, oh, there is a God and this, this is not enough today. That's why we need a differentiated spiritual life, which understands, for example, the fact that you have a lot of people today, which are in a way soulless. And that's why they can be possessed. Possessed must become an irrational um, uh, concept of a broadened, broadened spiritual life. It must be natural to say, well, this is a case of someone who is under possession and this and that demonic beings come in. This is not irrational, but we need to have a much stronger, concrete spiritual life to understand the, the complex realities today. So that's why this spiritual life that cannot be dictated by any state it cannot be dictated by the economy, but the economy, of course, does like necessarily the free spiritual life, because then a lot of realities in today's economy might be questions and might be criticized, and that is not wanted. You see that today. If someone criticizes the politics of the WHO, then someone comes and says, oh, this is conspiracy theory and, and um, worse even than that. So the key is 
the spiritual life, which gives us the tool to understand the complex realities that are not only physical, that is already there since many centuries, but now, and there, there, that's why we need spiritual science. So, so let me play devil's advocate because we see all these groups of anthroposophists and all these Waller schools and their spiritual tools are doing them no good. Well, one, one explanation is, especially in the West, in America, where the Arimanic influences are very strong. The schools, the Waldorf schools are under pressure to adapt to be, you know, this and right. that. And some of the schools even distance themselves from the founder and say, well, our founder had also some racist uh, uh, tendencies, which is absolutely nonsense, but it's there. So that shows that even in the movement that came out of Steiner's activities, the ideal of free spiritual life is not always fulfilled. So, it's undermined. So we just had, uh, I just saw a presentation by Richard Werner, mm -hmm. who's one of the top experts in the world central banking. Mm -hmm. And he talked about one of the executive directors of one of the European central banks, mm -hmm. explaining to them that the ultimate plan was to chip everybody. Yeah. And, and um, you know, and, and to, uh, you know, and that's the goal of where this was all going. And yet when you look at who's resisting and who's just going there, a lot of people, whether they're Christians or Buddhists or anthroposophists or whatever, it's as though their spiritual tools can't help them discern what's really happening, you know, and they continue to just go. And, and so the question is, is that, is that the Aramonic influence? I think there is more Aramonic influence in the world than we would um, naturally admit. Or uh, I think it's not over exaggerated to claim that many, many people are under an Aramonic influence today. And the spiritual life has the, um, the task to show us where are the spheres there we can, there we are influenced, mind control. It's important to understand that we are under influences until we understand them. That's the, that's the, uh, it can only be broken, this magic spell, by being un, under influenced if you understand the factors that influence you. But with that, you need, you need a clear spiritual life. So we're, we are still in the age of Michael, correct? Yes. So Archangel Michael is present. Yes. And, and how do we, because the question is, how do we support a threefold social order? How do we encourage it? How do we nurture it? How do we help bring it forward? Well, Archangel Michael is expecting that we do things out of understanding and freedom. The Arimanic, uh, Arimanic powers don't care about freedom. They just work wherever it is possible. Mm -hmm. So in a way, Ariman is uh, in an adva uh, um, advantage, you could say, uh, over against Michael. But on the long um, run, it will be different. But it is important that we act out of free understanding and not uh, under uh, influence. For example, it would not be the right thing to influence somebody to accept threefold or to accept anthroposophy. Uh, anthroposophy cannot be put in a way like uh, any missionary puts his impulse to the um, souls of the believers and doesn't care whether they understand much, but he just wants to have adherence. That's the drawback of spiritual science. It has to wait till the understanding comes um, to, to pick it up. Bolshevism didn't have that necessity. The Western logics don't wait till we understand what they want to do. The, the church doesn't wait till we understand what they want to do. But spiritual science has to do 
And that's the Michaeli. So we're competing against aggressive lobbying. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And you know, Steiner once said, the threefold comes of the spiritual science impulse based on what was already there in Europe as three ideals. But these three ideals are in continuous fight with each other in the present structure of the social life. They cannot manifest truly. Right. And um, so... So if, if you look at what's happening today, a lot of the movement away from a threefold social organism, one of the chief things that encourages that movement away is secrecy. Yes. And the more people speak about democracy and openness, the more they hide some secrecy right. behind it. That's just words, words, words. And of course, secrecy has to, to go away from all public uh, affairs. But secret, secrecy has to do with power, with striving to power. And power is an Arimanic factor. And as much as there is power likened in the word, people like and accept secrecy. So you cannot do away with secrecy as long as you want to have some power structure being maintained. Secrecy and power are linked, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, you know, in my experience, the, the control system is complex. It's not simple. Yes. But most people operate because uh, one, they're afraid of, of going outside the lines they've been trained to accept. But the other is, um, they believe, you know, there's an old expression in English, you can't fight City Hall. And they feel this is the way things are going. And so they're going to go, they're going to go with the winners. Yeah. So they say, these are the guys that are going to be in power. So we're going to go with them. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if they're a criminal enterprise. That's just yeah. the way things yeah. are. And you go with them. Well, it's howling with the wolves. Ah. Yes, also, yeah. you can put it like that. Yeah. Let me add another trinity, because this is all about the three. And I think humanity should learn to count to three, really, because they only count to two in the sense that it's all trapped in dualities, either or, this or that. And another trinity connected to brotherlyhood, economy, equality, law sphere, liberty, spiritual sphere, is that the human being itself has three basic parts. It's maybe not the best word. What is corresponding to economy and the ideal of brotherlyhood? It's the human physical body. We need to nourish our physical body. And that is something which should be ruled by an economic life which is really um, trying to fulfill the needs of the physical bodies of the human beings all over the world. In the right sphere, in the law sphere, you have the feeling for justice, which has to be uh, empathy. fed. Empathy, you have to have empathy. Exactly. And that's the soul quality of the human being. Body, soul. And then comes the most problematic thing today. This is the spirit. Spirit and soul are not the same. For many people, it's more or less synonymous. But the spirit goes into a higher sphere of objective truth about which you cannot um, fight or have different opinions. Two and two is four for everyone who can think. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have body, soul, and spirit, which correspond to the three ideals, which correspond to the three basic parts of the future social life. When we get out of the trap of the centralized mm -hmm. pseudo-social life, which is only producing strife and misery on end, without end. You see that today. So to, to, to break this up, we need really more 
strength in understanding the complex realities. And they are not only physical, they have soul and spiritual uh, sides. And that's so can I argue on behalf of Mr. Global? Yes, please. Yes. So what Mr. Global would say to Steiner if he was here, which he is, <laughs> his intelligence is flowing through you. Um, what Mr. Global would say I is... I hope not. I, okay. For me it is. Okay. So, so what Mr. Global would say is, this is all very good, uh, Mr. Meyer, Herr Meyer. The problem is that if you create, if you if you use a democratic process with the with the uh, with the people, the people will always vote for the quick buck. The people will not conduct themselves in this manner, and so we are put in a prisoner's dilemma because uh, it it all sounds very wonderful until you have to lead and implement it, but. There, as a practical matter, the world is moving too fast to take the time to uh, allow this kind of process to exist. Well, Mr. Klober wants to have uh, quick results, yes, and he doesn't want to have long processes. That's fine. But then we have to argue with, with Mr. Klober and say, well, that's what you want, but that's not really what humanity needs. Right. And humanity needs to know what you want in order not to be under um, one-sided influence of what you want. But that's the problem today. Many people, and this can only be solved by having a differentiated spiritual cognitional life, that you can see that Mr. Global is first there and what he wants second. And then you can get a little bit independent and say, well, is that what we want? Or is that what Mr. Global wants? And uh, of course, Mr. Global doesn't want us to understand what he, what he wants. Right. That's why we, we talked a lot about um, the cognition of Ariman, which is hard work. So isn't two, it? two questions. Um, if someone wants to learn more about Threefold, mm -hmm. There's a wonderful book you recommend. Yeah, there are many things, but one is, thank you for the reference. This is a, an essay in, in a book by a pupil of Steiner's, who was one of the best pupils I think he had. Uh, he wrote about esoteric aspects of threefold. And this has been translated into English. And you should find it, I think, on the web page. It's in the present age. It was translated by our able translator, Terry Boardman. And I can refer everyone to this book. It's by Carl... Carl Heyer. Heyer. H-E-Y-E-R. Uh, -E -E Carl Heyer. Okay. This is one of the best syn uh, syntheses of threefold that I know. But I, what I will also say is I've been a subscriber to the present age for many years and yes. you often have pieces exactly on threefold and you can of course also look at Steiner's uh, lectures on world econ economy which I think you know right where right. he speaks about the two volume the two values the value that is created in nature and the value that is brought through the spiritual work with uh, organizing the work done with nature. Uh, you find a lot of more details there. Or the book Fundamentals of the Social Questions. Maybe it's the right title. Yes, you can go into these things more and more, but I think we shouldn't forget that threefold has no chance as long as the, the spiritual cu uh, cultural life is in uh, prison. Right. No, absolutely not. And today right. it is in extreme prison state. Right. So, so how do we break out of that? So I get back to how we implement the th or nurture the threefold social order, and and you say step one is to break out of this spiritual, cultural prison. Mm -hmm. Somebody listening says, "Yes, that sounds great." Tomorrow, when I wake up, what's what do I, 
What's my next step? Understand the essential things that happen today. Not lose ourselves in, in useless details, which I think is a practical problem for many people. What is the big line? I, I'll quote again uh, a man who was a European, went to America and said, um, well, that's very actual because we have now the East-West problem in a new form with the Ukraine uh, war. This man said, well, the main aim of the American foreign policy in the last hundred years was to prevent that the um, East Russia and Germany comes together. Friedman, we can say that's the Friedman doctrine. And this is of course inhuman and goes against anything like threefold. And to understand that these things play a part today, even in the Ukraine, to see the main things in it and not be overwhelmed by thousands or five thousand details, that's, that's a training. So when Steiner talked about the, the role of Russia mm -hmm. over the next thousand mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. was was that connected to his vision of the emergence of a threefold social order? I think so. I think so, because if threefold would be implanted, uh, one of the effects of threefold is power um, streams have not such a good possibility to flower in threefolds. It's also a kind of a taming of power if you have these uh, various spheres. If you have one sphere that controls everything, power is endless, it's limitless. So, but there, there, one aspect of this, if I remember one of our conversations about this, is the role of Central Europe and the Slavic people in the emergence of a, of a, of a culture more grounded in a spiritual life. Yeah, but this is part of an understanding of, a, of the spiritual life that we understand there are long epochs of evolution and the people are differentiated. Mm -hmm. Some people have had their the task already performed, like the French nation, uh, the Italians. The British have their task now. The Central Europeans would have their task now too, but they are cut off by the British elite, not by the British people, because in ideal they should work together, the Middle European and the West. In, and there were always times in Great Britain and America with great interest for Middle European uh, culture, take Emerson, for example, Shakespeare earlier. And the task would be that the Middle Europeans spiritualize their own scientific life get beyond mere materialistic science, get into spiritual science, and then they could um, engender a development, development in the East for the Slavic people. They would wait for what is coming from Middle Europe, but what comes from Middle Europe today is nothing. Then brutal economic thought forms. That was the chance in 89, you know, 89 mm -hmm. and in Molke, you find, you find right. it in Molke. He was aware in the spiritual life already, but this is now uh, an, another theme. I don't want to go into that. But in 89, you had, you had just a fragmented movement in Europe. It was nice that everything was open, that you could travel and this and that. But what, what should have been done is threefold and spiritual impulse made known for the Eastern people. Instead, there was just economic thinking of the West that was flowing over and imitated by the uh, Eastern people so that they now come into all these Western useless structures like the NATO and the EU. So this was not a, 
a process that went fully to waken people up. And the Europeans themselves were not wakened up. There is a Russian sociologist which recently, who recently said, what the West has done with success in Europe is to produce a nation of castrates. <laughs> it's not very nice, no. the German. Yeah. Yes? And he quotes there something which I didn't know before, that Winston Churchill once said, and Churchill was a high mason, a high mason. At the same time, he was convinced of reincarnation. What an interesting combination. My experience is all the high masons believe in reincarnation. You see? Yeah. But you can also even misuse the idea of reincarnation for your group interests, you know? Right. There might be people who think, we know that in the Slavic East, a new culture will come. It's in, in, in their infancy. This, is, um, this was taught in the West. So if we want to, to be um, uh, powerful in the future, we must be the educators of this infant Slavic people now. And maybe some of these people even think, if we have success in that, we will come back in that sphere later and be the rulers instead of the Slavic people. And the Germans are put away because they are castrated. They have spiritually become a nation who is ashamed. Germans have been taught to be ashamed of their own past. And that's why... Well, they, because, but they don't understand their own past. They don't really yeah. know the true story. Yeah, they don't know the true story. So I'm going to take you back to what do we do when we wake up tomorrow? Because, um, you know, so, so yesterday we were in Geneva and somebody said, would you like to stay and have dinner? And I said, no, I want to get to Basel right away. Because then I'm going to be in Thomas's home and it feels wonderful. And it, you know, if you look at how you conduct your life, you know, it's always wonderful to come and be a part of it. So if you, if you come into your world and your life and what you do and how you do it, you know, this is a life that does everything it can to, to nurture the, the spiritual life and the culture and the teaching and the practice that does not invite Araman in. Yeah. And that helps to understand the Arimanic influence that right. all, but also people need here. to know, okay, well, how do I do that? <laughs> well, you have to study the Arimanic being. In, we gave, gave an up, uh, given out all the lectures that Steiner gave about Ariman. Mm -hmm. And they are quite taken up with great interest with some people. But I think something that we have talked late, uh, earlier already, even referring to threefold, the decisive points of um, renewing a social thing, a movement, is always in the hands of relatively few people. Not in the sense of secrecy, but you, we cannot expect, I think, I wouldn't expect that the masses suddenly wake up and that changes the world. And I mean, with your reference and our reference to the story of Gideon, it's very clear that we have to find the few people who are ready and to speak to them. That's what we do with our journals. That's what we do with our um, lectures here. We had a, a wonderful one on the East. I called it, the, it was about the Friedman Doctrine that I just portrayed, mm -hmm. the Moltke Doctrine for the future of this individuality, which is spiritually there and this belongs to the new uh, time that we admit and have openness for the spiritual side of life and right. of people and Moltke is a key person for middle europe whether you want or not so steiner does talk about periods when they will be more you know the world will be more receptive and and periods when the world will be less receptive he yes. does address that yes Yes, and the thing, yeah, there was a, a open sphere at his time, very open, but it was crushed by the National Socialists. 
you know, about 100 years ago, exactly, actually, exactly in May, there was the, um, uh, an attack, a public attack in Munich that led him to say, if these people come to power, we cannot go to Germany anymore. Went 1922 in Munich. And then in June, 100 years ago, was the last big public appearance in Vienna. And then came the other line, the Western line. Kutenhofer, Churchill built the European structure, the preparation for the world government, which we have now. Right. So we have a big, a big fight. And, but people could wake up, of course. They could. So I have to say, I find it remarkable. I think the Vienna Philharmonic is the greatest orchestra in the world. Yes. And when you're when you listen to them, the field, their their ability to create a field and hold a field, that sort of, it, it's almost like a spiritual healing mm -hmm. to experience that mm -hmm. field. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea how they do it, but I'm always in awe of it. So the fact that this was connected to the one of the musical fields in Vienna, I find mm -hmm. to be absolutely astonishing. It's marvelous. Yeah. Yeah, it is marvelous. Well, we have to go deeper, we have to have um, patience and we have to have what Dunlop, you know, one of my favorite references, one of the greatest pupils of Steiner who founded the World Power Conference, which plays into the subject of world economy. He had something which was very rare. He had something like it was called skill in action. That means the quality that you know exactly when the time is ripe for something and then do it and don't miss it. And this is something that we have to learn, not to be prematurely out of impatience, but you find, oh, now it's the time for this and that. And this should be maybe spread in more people that they know now is the time to do this or to do that. And of course we can be wrong, but we can learn there from even our mistakes. But today the spiritual life is under extreme attack. Look at the phraseology in the mainstream. Look at all this Russia phobia and all these illusions about democracy is being fought for humanity in Ukraine. This is, this is. So I confess, I was shocked during the last two years. Some of the spiritual leaders who I most admire, Christians, completely were completely, mind control is the only way I can describe, they were completely. Christians. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were completely unable to discern what was happening. And they were essentially marketing the mark of the beast. Yeah. And, um, and it was astonishing. It was astonishing. I've watched the steady financing and controlling centrally of the churches for a long time. But even I was surprised at the extent to which they just, it's almost as though they were incapable. It, it starts mm -hmm. where you began. We have to think for ourselves. They were incapable of thinking for themselves. Yeah. And we have to understand the techniques of the evil. By the way, I, I didn't finish the Churchill reference. Churchill is the big uh, motor for what we have now as the global state. He was. And he once said, we are not fighting Hitler. We are not fighting National Socialism. We are fighting the spirit of Schiller, that he would never be born again the spirit of Schiller, one of the biggest German poets. Mm. So you see a deep antagonism between the British elite, not the Britons as a people, but the elite and the American elite. They, un they understand that in Middle Europe, especially in the true German culture, there is an element of freedom as it was never there in the whole world. And it is not only for the Germans, it would be universal but you don't have any Germans anymore in Germany. Leiden, Leyen, uh, what's her name, Van der Leyen, etc. 
they have nothing to do with the true Middle European spirit. So also the British were very afraid of the productivity of the German Of course, this is also right. clear, right. absolutely. Right. There is envy and, um, yeah, and the Germans are become totally unable to understand the deep side of their own culture. So I'm, I'm going to oversimplify. There's this wonderful debate as they're debating whether or not to continue slavery. Mm -hmm. So as uh, additional states would come into the Union and the America, they would, um, you know, there'd be a debate would be a slave state or a free state. And a lot of the debate among the leadership was, you know, how do you develop the economy in this new territory? And the two options always discussed were you bring in the slaves or you instead import lots of German immigrants. And the German immigrants apparently could create a bigger, more powerful economy, but the problem was you couldn't control them. <laughs> so, so you couldn't centralize the capital. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the fight is going on and it's a fight of consciousness or a war of consciousness to, to stay. You know, one of my deeper questions is always also for seminars and lectures and so on. How can we come to the point of be sure that we have something in us which is not to be influenced by nothing? Right. If we don't find this point, we always you can we can always question, am I sure I'm not under this and that influence? How can we find the point of not being influenced in any way? We will maybe talk about this in our um, occult politics and mind control talk, which I think is very important too. So I think there's no more important question than how we find the space within ourselves to create integrity. And what I find so interesting about what you're teaching about the threefold is that Steiner basically says it starts there. Yeah, it yeah. does start there. Yeah, Without, so we, yeah. I just did an interview with Ora Conigo called Control and Freedom is One Person. Mm -hmm. Happens one person at a time. But freedom in the development of a human civilization has to come from that yeah. one person, each yeah. one of us. Yes, yeah. and that's the counter of the Wilson Doctrine. Wilson made people believe you have to have independence as an ideal of whole nations. And Steiner said, no, the individual must be free. Then the nations become free. Yeah. That's the other way around. But, but it starts with the individual's consciousness. Yes, yes. Right. but Wilson is known in the whole world, but Steiner's threefold is not yeah. yet. <laughs> Very good. Well, this is very fragmentary, but maybe the basic have been touched at least a bit. Oh, yes, I think. Yes. Yeah, I All think. right. I think, well, Thomas, I can't thank you enough. No, I thank you, because you had the idea of making this introduction of Steiner's world into your sphere. And I think it has quite, um, it is received well by many so, people. So I would say this, I had the idea of you introducing because... Oh. I, I find the same challenge in anthroposophy that I find in Christianity mm -hmm. and many other things. Mm -hmm. There's the real deal. <laughs> and there's all sorts of other versions. Mm -hmm. So what I want is I, I want people to understand Steiner's teachings through your introduction. The integrity of his teaching, not the mixture with all other things. Right. So. Okay, we proceed and we'll finish by the end of the year. <laughs> you have my word and we don't make any further intermezzos in the future. No, we can make intermezzos. We just need to finish. Okay. Yeah, we can have as many intermezzos okay, okay, as we okay. want. We but just first we to, finish. But then you decide the next two. Okay. Or three or whatever. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, so Thank I have you. to end this. Thank you. Thank you. And... Thomas, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for welcoming us into your home. Same, same. And thank you for teaching, and thank you for joining us on the Solaire Report. Thank you, thank you. Also to Robert. <laughs>